Good morning and happy Sabbath Heights family. Today I will be uh, speaking on the topic of latter rain and I hope and pray that God speaks through this message for all of us. Uh, before I start, I'd like to have a short word of prayer. Lord God, thank you for making a way that we could hear and communicate and have our virtual church. Lord, we ask that may you speak into our heart through the message that we hear. May you be with our friends and families and people who are affected because of this virus. Please, Lord, may you give your wisdom and knowledge for everyone who is involved in search of a solution for this. The answer is in your hand. May your wisdom, may your guidance be upon our leaders as well. Thank you, Lord. And as I speak, may you guide me with your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Latter rain. The Bible speaks a lot about the latter rain. <clears throat> as you know, water is the essential for all life on the on this planet but i'll be speaking on the context of farming or a lot of rain or early rain in the context of biblical uh, prospect so often farmers obtain most of the waters for their crops from the rain a rain water that is not observed by the soil and the plant roots runs into the river into the streams. In some cases, we do have these well waters or some drinking waters that is somehow comes from these rain water. Let us see some amazing facts about the rain, you know. As you listen to these facts, think about the spiritual relation in the context of early and rough rain. The first one, a forest that receives between 98 and 177 inches of rain each year is called a rain forest. Wow, that's a lot of water. That means that place receives and must be very green and productive in terms of bringing out uh, as a result of this water. Uh, one droplet of water it spends on average eight days in suspension before falling back to earth as a rain. Wow. Raindrops have a size fluctuating from 0.1 to 9 millimeter in diameter, above which they tend to break up before they reach to the earth. And the rain that freezes before it hits the ground is a frozen rain. Imagine that also spiritual meaning in relation or in the context of early and rough rain as we as we move along a rain that doesn't wet you for oh, there is a rain that doesn't wet you that means if you are in the desert the chances the chances that you might get wet is a very low because the rain that is called phantom rain because because of the hot air, a rain drops gets evaporated before it reaches the ground. Wow, imagine that also as well, spiritual context. And what we have nowadays, we have umbrella, which was originally invented to protect people from the hot sun. Hmm, what kind of umbrella do we have that covers the rain? that falls on us. And we have artificial rain, believe it or not. This is induced by chemicals that is sprayed in the clouds, and then later on you will have a rain, which is man-made. And uh, here we have two, I have two more facts that is um, with regards to the fruit or the products that come out of the rain, you know? Uh, 2,500 
500 gallons or 9,500 liters of water are used to raise and process a pound of beef. Wow, that's a lot of water. As compared to 80 gallons or 300 liters of water are used to grow and process one ear of corn. Hmm, it's much cheaper to produce plants rather than raising you know, a pound of beef. So this rain is a very, very important for farmer because they rely on these to produce their, their, their crops. So here are how the farmers use to grow the crops. If you are going to be a farmer, you must have faith. A faith that says that it will rain. So that is the starting point in farming, especially if you are going to rely on natural rainfall. Farmers, by faith, they start working on their farm that is going to rain, not only one time, but seasonally. Farmers, they don't just throw the seeds and expect the rain to fall and grow their crops. They do their due diligence by cultivating the land now and then as the crops go and as they wait to rain. When their harvest season approach, they especially anticipate the rainfall that will prepare the crop to, to be ripe and ready to harvest. Farmers have faith on the spoken word that it will rain. They are not born with these faiths because they learn this faith by seeing and by experiencing. So they, 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 they put on this faith by practicing it because they, they have to have a faith before they even start their form. The Bible says in the book of Romans 10, 17, you know? So faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So faith on the spoken word of God, that it will rain, that it will rain. So we should have this kind of faith in our life. Before we, we even start something, we should have faith on the spoken word of God. So when we are going to speak about a lot of rain, what does the Bible say? I do have here some, some, some verse. In Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1, it says, Ask the Lord for rain. In the time of the latter rain, the Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain, grass in the field of everyone. So we have to ask for the rain, and the Lord is going to rain it. Hosea 6.3, it says, let us, let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. He is going forth established as a morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. Joel 2.23, it says, Be glad then, you children of Zion. And rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you former rain faithfully. He will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. So he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain. So, the, so these rain fall in the time of while you are preparing your farm. It is necessary in order that the seed may germinate. Under the influence of the fertilizing showers, the tender shoot spring up. The latter rain falling near the close of the season ripens the, the grain and prepares it for the, for the harvest. So remember this verse. In, in Matthew 5.45, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Not all the crops bear fruit, if you think of far. 
a farmer doesn't remove the crop that doesn't bear the fruit right away. He waits till the harvest, but he hopes that towards to the harvest, there might be some fruit on that crop. So God hopes that because of this rain, you and I might bear fruit that will qualify us to be harvested. He is our farmer who, who waters us now and then. And it's up to us to bear fruit. I hope we bear a fruit that appears our, our father or our farmer. As the dew and the rain are given first to cause the seed germinate, germinating, then to ripen the harvest, so the Holy Spirit is given to carry forward from one stage to another the process of the spiritual growth. The ripening of the grain represents the completion of the work of God's grace in the soul. By the power of Holy Spirit, the moral image of God is to be perfected in the character. We are to be wholly transformed into the likeness of Christ. Unless, unless the early showers have done their work, the latter rain can bring no seed. You see? Let's see. Let's see what happened when, when the early rain falls. Or before we go to that one. In the farming profit process, the early rain helps the crop to grow, to bear fruit, and to be independent, you know, to stand a strong wind that might, you know, push it down. But as it got, gets closer to the harvest time, it needs a lot of rain that would make the harvest ripe and ready to be harvested. So in the same way, there is a spiritual context that the Bible talks about that the early and the rattle rain in terms of the Holy Spirit being given to the children of God. Let's see the context in Matthew 24, 53, in obedience to the Christ command, the disciples waited in Jerusalem for the promise of, promise of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They did not idly wait. The record says they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Let's see some of the results of the early rain that we can read in the book of Acts chapter one through two. If we read there, we find that the words of penitence and confession mingle with the songs of praise for sins that are forgiven. So when the early rain or when early Holy Spirit is given to the disciples, they confess and they praised God. Thousands were converted in a day. Wow, that is so powerful. They must have a divine spirit with them to convince this amount of people in a single day. Holy Spirit did for them that which they could not have accomplished for themselves in a lifetime. I'm talking about they spoke in a different language. Imagine the time it will take you to learn one language, a language that you have not spoken in your life. They spoke with fluency. And backsliders were converted. So, the work will be similar to that of the Pentecost or, or the Acts in the book of Acts chapter 1 and 2. The similar experience we will have when we have the latter rain. As the former rain was given in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at the opening of the gospel to cause up at the upbringing of the process of the seed. So the latter rain will be given at the close, uh, its close for the ripening of the harvest. At that time, the latter rain or refreshing from the presence of the Lord will come to give power to the loud voice of the third angel. So you are hoping to see a loud cry. We gotta have to have a lot of rain first. 
this will prepare us to stand in this spirit even in the last seven plague we should be able to stand when we have the latter rain see the early rain produces change in our heart the latter rain develops a christ-like character the holy spirit seeks to abide in each of us if it is welcomed in our heart and if we received it it will be made complete christ in our life the good work which began by god the holy thoughts heavenly affection the christ-like actions will take place in our thoughts in our hearts all the rebellious the sinful behaviors that dwells in our soul will flee when we have the latter rain so there are a few things that at a minimum we know and i believe as a as an adventist we must know or we, we have known about it i have here four things some of them are in our our our, our 28 fundamental beliefs and the first one is since 1844 we are living in the last day a sanctuary lesson in the bible along with the back the book of daniel it speaks louder than our ears can handle about that we are living in the last days and the second one we believe in the soon return of jesus christ the bible is full of that it speaks a lot about the, the soon re return or the soon coming of jesus and the third one we see every day in this generation is signs of times things that are spoken in the bible about the last days to name one pandemic or pandemic, whatever we say this one is very special it has even the mark of six you know nowadays you go to the restaurant or any public space you see you gotta have to have a six feet ahead of you and left and right and in your back and six 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 even in our churches when you sit in your in your pew now you see that you have a six feet apart on your left right back and forward six 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 i wonder what will come out of this under the signs of times the second thing that I've, i have here is the earthquake do you know that there is an earthquake every single day on this earth sometimes like a, a number of quakes that are recorded because we focused on something that is on the news on the top news we forget the other one and the third one i have is, here is a christian alliance or we christians are uniting once we were opposed to meaning different denominations are coming together leaving aside the doctrinal differences thinking that they will get sorted out when they get to heaven about the difference let's get united i think that is not the truth we gotta have to have the truth that must unite us not just to defeat something politically or whatever is popular in, in the society and the last one is sunday sacredness which is spoken widely in the media in the disguise of uh, climate change or in this political arena that we could see it and the last the fourth one is we know that we will be given from heaven the lot of rain we all know we are looking forward to it because we have known that God will send the lottery rain, most of us are waiting sincerely in one of these days, God will pour out his spirit on us. In some case, some of us, we believe it's Holy Spirit's work to make, up, to, uh, to make me up and get me ready. So how is that expectation is gonna be? So here are, the five things that we should be doing in order for us to get ready or to receive the Holy Spirit. 
because the early the early rain produces change in our heart and the latter rain develops a christ-like character in our life the first one that we should be doing is that we should not have an expectation that not all of us will receive the lot of rain. Now, for this part, I will rely on the spirit of prophecy. It says, I was shown that if God's people make no effort on their part, but wait for the refreshing to come upon them and remove their wrongs and correct their errors, if they depend upon that to cleanse them from filthiness of their flesh and spirit, and fit them to engage in a loud cry of the third engine, they will be found wanting. You can read that in Testimonies, T Testimonies for the Church, 1619 in 1867. And I have here the second one. Are we hoping to see the whole church revived? That time will never come. There are persons in the church who are not converted, who will not unite in earnest prevailing prayer we must enter upon the work individually we must pray more and talk less selected message page 122 1887 i have here another one we may be sure that when the holy spirit is poured out those who did not receive and appreciate the early rain will not see or understand the value of the latter rain. Ah, another one here. Only those who are living up to the light they have, they have will receive the great light. Unless we are daily advancing in the exemplification of the active Christian virtues, we shall not recognize the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the latter rain. It may be falling on the hearts all around us, but we shall not discern or receive it. That's in Testimonies of, to Ministers and Gospels, page 507. Those who make no decided effort, but simply wait for the Holy Spirit to compel them to action will perish in darkness. You are not to sit still, do nothing in the work of God. But not all of us are going to receive it. That is very 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 strong so what can we do our second point will tell us we must pray earnestly for the holy spirit we should pray as earnestly for the discernment of the holy spirit as the as the disciples prayed at the day of pentecost if they need it at that time we need it more today see if we read the book of matthew chapter 7 Verse 7 and 8, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. We should be asking for the spoken word, says. He who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And he who knocks, will find it open. If we don't have a desire and given it to us, uh, there is a high probability that we will not receive it. Or the question is why it is not given while I didn't ask. The best way that we can ask is the prayer for he who says, I will give it to you is a faithful. So we must ask in our prayers a prayers like Daniel. If we read the book of Daniel, chapter 17, verse 20 to 23, I love this prayer. I love how this man sincerely opens his heart to the Lord. It says in the Bible, Daniel 7, 20, Now, while I was speaking, praying, and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God, for the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, Daniel, he did not only pray for himself, but for his whole nation, asking, lo and behold, the angel came to answer, for he has asked, ask and you will receive. 
He asked the right way with confession. So under the prayer, when we are praying, we have to be like Daniel. We have to be like him. We should pour out self from us so that Christ will fill in with his spirit, with his latter reign. So as we continue the book of Daniel, verse 23, it says, in the beginning of the application, I command, the command went out. I, the Gabriel is speaking, have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and the understanding of the beast. So because Daniel, he prayed from his heart, opened his heart before God. But you might be asking, what was his prayer? Let's read back by Daniel 7, verse 5. Here is some of his, his prayers. We have seen and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and rebelled, even by departing from your precepts and your judgments. Neither have we heeded your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, to our fathers, all the people of the land. Wow. Do we have a prophet that is given for this church? Are we listening to her counsels? Or as a, as a matter, are we listening to the counsel from the Bible that prophets are spoken? Or the word of God are spoken to us? Let's read verse 10. We have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yes, all Israel has transgressed your law and has departed to us not to obey your voice. We must ask God to send us the last rain, for we will have it. There should be, this should be our prayer, just like Daniel, to pour on us his spirit, so that we will go out and cause the loud cry in our generation. You see, Daniel here, he's, he's not just asking for himself. He's asking for understanding. He's asking for the forgiveness of the sin for his nation. He's acknowledging that, that the nation has departed from the precepts and the command and the laws of the Lord. Is this happening in our, in our generation? Is this happening in your life, in my life? This is a serious question that we should be asking ourselves. You see, these calls for revival and reformation in our life. The revival of true godliness among us is the greatest, the most urgent for all that we need. To seek this should be our first work. You see, because we are unprepared to receive it. If we are prepared, we should conduct this. If you want to be prepared, we should have this. If some of us or some of you have already in this past, praise the Lord, please do not stop, continue until we receive the latter rain. Under the prayer, we should have a reformed life. In another way, we have to reform and revive our life personally and communally as a church. Do you remember Ezra and Nehemiah? They did not only rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, but they also reformed and revived the congregation by restoring the commandment of God. There are some unlearning and learning. Reforming of personal and corporate life was an integral part of it. So these two individuals, they brought back, restored the peace and order in, 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 the, in the congregation that was somehow departed from the presence of the Lord. You see, a revival and reformation must take place under demonstration or under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So these two words are different. In. Revival is an important part of renewing our spiritual life. 
we have to be awake. You know, I heard once the preacher was saying, Adventist, Adventists have AIDS. You know, AIDS stands for acronym for Adventist in Deep Sleep. So we gotta have to be awake. We gotta have to, we have to be awake. If ever you are asleep, remember the 10 virgins, five of them have oil and five of them don't. You gotta have, make sure that you have an oil if you are sleeping. If you do not have, please be awake. If, if you, are, you are sleeping and you have the Holy Spirit or oil with you, please be awake. This is a moment that we should be shining for, for the Lord. Reformation is an important, it's a reorganization, a change in ideas, a change in theories, in our habits, in our practices. Reformation will not bring, bring forth a good fruit in us. Unless it, unless it is connected with the revival through the Holy Spirit. So we must have this revival and reformation as we do our prayer part. Our third part for the latter rain to fall on us, how can we prepare? And the third point is we must put away all the strife and dissensions and replace it with one, with love one another. We must love one another. You remember the, the Samaritan, the, the, the parable that was told by Jesus, you know, the good Samaritan principle. Uh, the question here is that, you know, the Samaritans are the enemies of Israelites. But who is our neighbor in this story that we see, you know? But all, all the Israelites, regarded the Samaritans as enemies. Someone whom they are expe never expected to do good to one of them. But the Samaritan did it. He broke the bond of the, this, this hatred that existed between the two groups of people. So the good Samaritan broke this rule of strife against racist or hit act in society by showing kindness and love to his enemy. We must have this principle restored or installed in us by any means. When Christ abides in our soul, when all selfishness is dead, when there is no revelry, no strife for the supremacy, when, when oneness exists, when we sanctify ourselves, so that love for one another is seen, felt, and then showers of the grace of the Holy Spirit will surely come upon us. God's promise will never fare in one jot or tittle. As God's promise in his, in his words, we will have it, our, uh, the latter rain poured in us when we have set aside this strife and hatred from our life. Christianity is revealing tenderness, affection for one another. Christ has to receive his ultimate love from, from the being, from us, that he has created us. He requires us that man shall cherish a sacred regard for his fellow beings. Every soul saved will be saved through love, which begins with God. True conversion is changed from selfishness to sanctified affection for God and for one another. In another way, we have to surrender all to God. You know, we cannot use the Holy Spirit. The Spirit has to use us. Through the Spirit, God works in His people to do to will and to do his good pleasure in Philippians 2, 13. And the fourth one, what can we do to receive the Holy Spirit is we have to clear or <clears throat> clearing the way for the latter rain. You know, for every generation, God sends a prophet, a prophet to wake the people in that generation. 
Sometimes God moves the whole generation to be awake and to stand for the Lord. If we see Jeremiah, the prophet, he warned the people to return to God's law and, and, and his moral standards. But eventually the people who refused to listen to the message, they were carried away to Babylon. But for those who has listened to him, they were able to survive and to flee the, 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 um, the persecution from the Babylonians. And then we pass again and we see John the Baptist. He was called to make a way to prepare the people to receive Jesus. And we, as an Adventist, we are called by God to awaken this generation, to get them ready that soon return of Jesus Christ and to receive the Holy Spirit. And first, we have to start with us and within our church. You see, his message, John's message was prepare the way, make the, the straight path, amend your life, be upright with God. Also, don't forget to be side right with your fellow beings, you know, to be side right with your fellow beings. You know, John the Baptist, he was called by God to make, to amend or to prepare the heart of the people in his generation to receive the Savior or the Messiah. But somehow, big majority missed it. But those who have heard and listened the spoken word have received that blessing. And we see the fruit in Acts chapter 2, the early rain. Yeah. It is left with us to remedy the defects in our character, to cleanse the soul temple of every defilement. Then the latter rain will fall upon us as the early rain fell upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost. This is from Testimony of the Church in 1882. There is nothing that Satan fears so much as that the people of God shall clear the way by, remo by, removing, by removing every hindrance so that the Lord can pour out his spirit, his spirit upon the languishing church. Every temp temptation, every opposing influence, whether open or secret, may be successfully resisted. Not by might, nor by our power, but by the spirit of the Lord. God says in the book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6. The latter rain will come, and the blessing of God will fill every soul that is purified from every defilement. It is our work today to yield our souls to Christ, that we may be fitted for the time of refreshing or for the latter rain from the presence of the Lord. You see, as part of this, as we wait and as we do this, we got to have to be actively participate in service for God's kingdom. We are not going to just sit down and see our brothers and sisters to wander and perish this world. We got to have to make them awake so that the Lord will come soon and receive and harvest them. You know, when the church become a living, working church, the Holy Spirit will be given in answer to their sincere request. And we got to have to pray and we got to have to ask this, you know. The great outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God, which lightens the whole earth with his glory, will not come until we have an enlightened people that know by experience what it means to be laborers together with God. We got to have to have unity. We got to have to believe in, in oneness, you know, we all are working for the kingdom of the Lord. When we have the entire and wholehearted consecrated to the service of God, God will recognize the fact by outpouring his spirit without a measure. But this will not be while the large portion of the church are not laborers together with God. So, you know, if the big majority of us are concerned about how we are going to live on this on this earth for a short period of time, 
but we're missing the big portion. So you need, we need to, we need to be coming together for these so that we will work for the kingdom of the Lord. And the last part is that we have to keep the vessel clean and our lamps trimmed and burning. But we need not to worry about the lot of rain. All we have to do is to keep the vessel clean and right side up and prepared for the reception of the heavenly rain and by keep praying. And if we do all these steps, and the lot of rain come into our vessel, and the light of the glorious angel, which unites with the third angel, shines upon us and give us a part in these last generation. You know, we have to be ready. Our only safety is in being ready for heavenly refreshing, having our lamps trimmed and burning, because we do not know the specific time on the, the specific time when God is going to pour out his, his spirit. You see, if our cup is filled with our selfishness for a desire to gain more, for a desire, you know, to, to live long on this generation, on this earth, we're not going to receive it. We receive it the offering. We have to pour out that and ask God to fill our cup with his Holy Spirit so that God will be dwelling in our heart, in your heart. And that is my prayer. Lord God, thank you very much, Lord, for this message. Lord, may you speak into our heart. As we have heard, help us mark and be committed to it. Ask sincerely, amend our ways and get ready shine for your glory this generation in jesus name i pray amen god bless you happy sabbath